Welcome to another episode of Future Focus by JR Motion Media, bringing you stories of social and environmental innovation from around the globe. I'm sure you recognize where I am today. I'm in a city which is known for its innovation, culture, art, and most of all, its canals. But don't worry, this isn't another episode about how many bikes there are in the city or how much weed there is. No, this is about something much more interesting. Something which you can hardly even see, yet it's making a big impact on the local environment and hopefully the environment of many other cities in the future. According to the local water authority, Waternet, 3,500 kilos of waste is collected from the canals of Amsterdam every day. All these canals, all around our cities, all around the world, then lead into our oceans. By 2050, scientists have estimated that there could be more plastic in the ocean than there are fish. That's at least 937 million tons of plastic and 895 million tons of fish. And on top of that, National Geographic has estimated that 73% of beach litter worldwide is plastic. So in response to these problems, cities, companies and individuals have taken the initiative to find solutions to these problems. And this is a perfect example of that. We're at the Bubbleberry Amsterdam, in Amsterdam, specifically at the Vesterdok. We are here at one of the major outflows that leaves the city and flows towards the North Sea. And behind me you see the bubble barrier, or more specifically the bubble curtain of the bubble barrier. And this is basically just a tube that we place diagonally on the bottom of the river or the canal. It's perforated and through the air that we pump through that tube, a lot of tiny air bubbles will rise uh, and those create an upwards directed current. And that current brings up plastic which is suspended underwater to the surface and then at the surface together with the natural flow of the river is all pushed to the side and then into the catchment system on which we're standing right now. And here we retain the waste until it's removed and shipped off for processing. We could show over a period of three weeks that we would catch around 86% of that material. We kind of want to take it a step further and really look into what kind of size of objects, um, what kind of density do they have and um, really expand on how much we're capturing with the bubble barrier. We now see that we capture down to one millimeter uh, in size, so we're already capturing microplastics, but we also want to see if we potentially have an impact on even smaller particles and also how efficiently do we capture and retain those smaller particles. Something we didn't expect to really see that much is, is styrofoam. I mean, you expect to have these, these larger pieces of styrofoam, but especially if you look a little bit closer, there's a lot of these like small pieces of styrofoam that are just flying around everywhere. And, and this is not a lot. Sometimes it's, it's, it looks like it has snowed and everything is full with these small little styrofoam pieces. I think another object which you tend to oversee if you just look at the water are these foils kind of like transparent foils but yeah also the glass bottles you know someone was uh, celebrating something we have what looks like some medicine painkillers um, cans more styrofoam face masks that's definitely one of the newer objects that we unfortunately now see in the water as well a simple low maintenance and effective solution to one of our world's greatest current issues so Stay tuned to the latest developments of the Great Bubble Barrier as they expand their enterprise all over Europe and hopefully all over the world while gaining more partnerships and improving their services along the way. That's one problem and one solution. See you next time. Oh. <laughs>